Hey everybody, it's Vicki again with Dementia with Grace. Um, if you have not watched one of these videos before, let me give you a quick um, introduction to myself. My name is Vicki Nolan Fitch and I am a BSW, uh, also a certified dementia practitioner. Um, I have been in practice for over 20 years. Uh, I never had a person um, uh, in my life, um, a family member with dementia, but I have cared for hundreds of other people's family members with dementia. I ran a dementia unit where I was the primary um, director of the unit and had folks working under me and we took care of folks. This is where I learned the stuff on the front lines is where I learned all of this stuff. And I have um, developed a new behavior management um, platform, a tool um, called Dementia with Grace. Uh, and we will be talking about those in the um, in the videos to come. And I also have a book that will um, hopefully be um, published the end of February of 2018. Um, so just in a couple of months, we should have that going. Today's video is my five guiding principles of dementia caregiving. Um, there are five things that I know to be true and um, five things that I know to be helpful. And I want to share those things with you, okay? The first is that um, no matter what stage your person is in, um, if they are in the beginning stages of dementia or the very end stages of dementia, there is something of that person that remains that can be built on. Absolutely. There are ways to make connections, um, even in the latter, latter stages where all speech uh, and all um, understanding is lost. There is a, the soul of a person that can be connected with. I absolutely believe that. I have seen it. Um, I have interacted with people who um, could no longer lift their head off a pillow, and I have interacted with them and felt the love between us and the relationship that we have had together, and I know that there's something to build on. Um, number two um, is probably the one that um, guides my, my dementia caregiving and behavior management the most. And that is, I have a firm belief that all behaviors are because of an unmet need. There is something going on um, that they're not getting what they need. Um, either they're in pain or uh, they're dehydrated or um, there's, there's a lot of things that, that happen to a person. Um, and they can't express it anymore in, in the ways, in a typical way. They can't say, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm bored, I'm in pain, um, my elbow hurts, you know, my arthritis is acting up. I mean, there's things, I'm lonely. You know, there are things that they can no longer verbalize. But if we are good caregivers and we give a kind of an ongoing assessment of that person, we can pick up on things. Whether you're a family caregiver or a professional caregiver, those things can be um, learned. You need to know your person, and we will talk about all of that. This, again, is one of the quick uh, beginning videos, so I want to go through everything very quickly. Um, when it is, um, when you're dealing with a behavior, um, I, I am of the firm belief that you have to be the calmest person in the room. If somebody is having a catastrophic reaction to the fact that they don't want to take a bath, you can then not also match their anxiety and their agitation by becoming angry with them. That is not going to work. They're not going to get a bath, and you're not going to get any, any, <laughs> anything accomplished. And it's just it's, it's a no-win situation. You have to learn how to become the calmest person in the room, the calmest person in the situation. And if you, and I'm, I will teach you skills and how to develop that, but you just have to know that. You just have to know it in your heart. Between the two of us, here in this moment, in this behavior, in this usually a catastrophic reaction, um, I have to be the one in control because this person who is suffering from uh, a type of dementia who that has assaulted their brain and they are suffering from brain damage, that is what it is, um, they can no longer control their reaction or their understanding or their insight or name it, whatever it is. They've usually lost control of it. Um, especially by the time, by the time you're having significant behaviors and you're on YouTube looking for somebody to tell you what to do with your mama, um, you're at the point where they no longer have any insight usually. And um, they, they don't really, they don't know what they don't know. Does that make sense? Um, it will. Uh, but you have to become the calmest person in the room. That's number three. Number four, 
there is no one perfect way to be a caregiver. There is no one perfect way. I don't have the total answers. Um, nobody I know has the total answers. There's no one perfect way to be a caregiver. But let me tell you something, and I want to encourage you here. There are hundreds of ways to be a very good caregiver and to be a the kind of caregiver who can lay down at night and know that they have done their best with their person. And that's, that's what I'm here to teach you is how to do that. That's an absolute guiding principle that, um, you know, there's a lot of times that you just, and, and in my practice, in the 20 years that I've done this, you know, a lot of folks, I'll tell you, there are, there are folks that, that think that I know it all and that, you know, that I can just come in and I'm a dementia whisperer or something. I am not. I am not. I mean, this is 20 plus years of hard won experience with a lot of failures and some successes. And so I've just learned how to build on the successes and find out what is the common common denominator in my successes? What is the common denominator in my failures? And let me tell you something I believe firmly, and it's a guiding principle in my life, is that a failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. When you fail at something, you just have to try the next thing. You know, they say there's a, there's a quote that I just love um, on, uh, I think I saw it on Pinterest, and it said, um, if plan A fails, you've got 25 more letters in the alphabet. Love it, love that, because that is so the truth. Because I tell you, I have made it to W before, <laughs> before I figured out a way to get somebody to take a bath, or change their clothes, or eat, or take their medicine. Um, you know, so yeah, I've, I've, I've done the alphabet. So, I, so, you know, because I have, you don't have to. If, you know, if you subscribe, and follow and uh, kind of stay with me on, on, you know, kind of what we're doing. And number five is, um, this is what I call the, um, the, the airplane syndrome. You know, when you're, when they're going through all the airplane things, the stewardesses, when you're on the line and they say, you know, if, if the, if we start going down and the oxygen things fall down, put your oxygen on first and then help the dependent person with you, whether it's a child or something like that. Yeah, you gotta get your oxygen. By that I mean, you've got to make time for yourself. I suggest an hour a day, a day a month, a week a year, that you absolutely take just for yourself. That you say, um, this time is sacred, I'm putting it on the calendar, I'm doing it. Um, you can find an hour a day, you might have to get up you know, 30 minutes earlier, or you may have to go to bed an hour later, but you've got to have some time to reconnect with yourself as a person, as a caregiver, as a daughter, as a wife, as a husband, as, you know, whatever you are to your person who you're giving care to, you've got to connect. And so I say an hour a day, a week, what, what was it, an hour a day, a day a month, a week a year, I'll put it down here, um, where you just have time just for yourself. Don't think that you're selfish by, you know, saying, I've just got to get out of this situation. I, she shadows me everywhere I go. I cannot go to the bathroom without mama being at the door saying, um, are you okay? Are you okay? That absolutely happens. Or you've heard the same story for the 25th time today. And, you know, you've got, you've got to take a break. Don't feel bad about that. Don't feel bad about that. Um, you, you're getting your own oxygen. And, and that is important. So those are my five guiding principles. I will put them down below. If you found value in this, please subscribe. Um, at the bottom, you can subscribe. And then there's a little bell right there that um, once you subscribe, it'll say, would you like to be notified when these um, videos go live? And you say, yes, ma'am, thank you. And you hit that bell and um, then it'll come to your phone. And then, um, Join us over on the Facebook support group page. It's on uh, Dementia with Grace. It's a group. Um, there's a page and a group on Facebook. You want to be in the group, you can be on page too, but you want to be on the group. That's where we do all of our talking, all of our interactions. We've got lots of folks. We've got a very robust group. I'm on it all the time. I respond to questions and um, situations and things like that. And we have other folks that have been doing this a long time and they do, they do too. They say, hey, this is what's working in my life. Or, you know, they come on and they say, y'all, this day is, uh, and you need somebody to understand when you just say this day, you need somebody that can understand the day that you're having. And they do. And I do. And I care about it. I care about it. Leave any questions that you have below on Fridays. Uh, we have Facebook Live on Fridays. Again, that's another good reason to be con connected with us on Facebook um, in the Dementia with Grace group. Um, I get on there and I answer questions from these videos the week uh, these videos comes out. 
blah, blah. These videos come out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so on Fridays, I have usually a bevy of questions to choose from, from both these videos and the uh, support group um, that I go into more detail with sometimes or um, just answer those questions. It's a time for you to connect with me to say, hey, what's going on? It's all free. It's a free private Facebook group. Um, these YouTube videos are private. Um, there may come a time when, you know, I have some uh, affiliate links or something below, but I would definitely let you know what those are. If that happens, I, I don't know what I'm doing now, so it's, it's not a part of my uh, schematic now because I have no idea how to do it or anything. Everything that I'm doing for you is because I love folks with dementia and I love their caregivers. And it is a passion of mine, and I want to share the knowledge, the hard-won hard knowledge that I have um, developed in the last 20 years, 20 plus years, and I want to share that, you know, with everybody that, you know, can hear me, you know. And I figured that YouTube was a really good way to, to get this message out. So, bear with me as I learn. Um, bear with me in the quality of the videos. Um, eventually, you will come to find out what these flamingos are all about. I'll talk to you about all that. Um, but in the meantime, join us. Join us on Facebook group. Join us down in the comments, and um, let's get a conversation going, okay? All right. I thank you for your time. I know that you have lots of things to do with your life, and I thank you for spending 11 and 27 minutes with me. Thank you. Y'all take care. Bye.